Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Star Trek Online. So we are getting very near the end <coughs> the end, excuse me, of the Federation storyline. As you can see, we only have this much to go before we hit level fifty. And when we hit level fifty, that puts us at what's called Vice Admiral, and that is the highest level in the game. You cannot get any higher, that's a level cap. So we are almost at max level in this game, which means we'll basically have access to everything the game has to offer as far as um, level goes. Um, there are other ranks, of course, involved beyond that, and we've already talked about some of that. For example, in the DOF system, we, we looked at the uh, diplomatic stuff, and we're only at rank 2 on diplomatic. We are only a console. When we get to rank 3, we get new stuff like new contact, mi first contact missions. Um, we get more duty officers. We can grant Diplo immunity and transwarp to Starbase uh, 39. When we get to rank four, which is full ambassador, um, we get uh, more abilities and stuff. So even though we'll, we will get to rank 50 or level 50 here very soon, um, we can still level up in the diplomatic stuff and again once you get to ambassador then you're pretty much at the top of everything you can get in this game level 50 and ambassador gives you pretty much all the stuff so we're not quite there yet on the diplo stuff but we will be eventually that takes a long time uh, because you really need to be doing those doff missions along the way and we haven't been doing them and you can see we're very far away from ambassador and unfortunately it's just going to take too long for me to really show you leveling that up um, because it just takes too long but you've seen what you can get because of it so I recommend if you're playing the game on your own that is a goal you should strive for get to level 50 and get to ambassador on the diplomatic stuff once you do that you're at the top of this game um, okay now we are continuing our storyline missions and we finished the Breen Invasion. That was that whole Breen FE. And I have to say, overall, that's one of my favorite FEs in this game. Uh, the, again, this was the very first one they introduced with the game. The game, of course, launched. And, uh, and then, like, by the end of the year, or in the next year, or whatever it was, they had the first featured episode series, and this was it. And I, th I, I, I don't think they've ever really topped it, in my opinion. I think it has the best balance of space battle and ground battle. And in a fast game like this, where it's action-oriented, I think you need that. I think they, la they kind of slacked off in some future FEs. Like, for example, the, the latest one, the Jim Hadar one. Yeah, there is some space battle and some ground battle, but a lot of it is puzzle. And a lot of it is really diplomatic kind of stuff. Stuff that's kind of boring and the puzzles are like, yeah, okay, you do them, but there's just not much to it after that. And I don't know, I just really like the Breen Invasion because it's got a great mix of ground and space battle, and you need that in a featured episode series. Um, so now we are coming towards the end of the Federation missions. This last one is called the Undine Advance, and this deals directly with the Undine as we've seen uh, in Star Trek Voyager, they were introduced. Species 8472, is that it? I've, I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head. I think it's Species 8472 was their name. That's what uh, um, Seven of Nine, uh, or the Borg, that's what they designate them as. I think that's right. I'm pulling right that straight from my head, so I think that's right. But I could be wrong. <laughs> anyway... This whole, ser this whole uh, last storyline mission deals with them. Now, when this game first launched, some of these episodes weren't in the game yet, and they actually added these episodes after the game was launched, which made the Undine advance even more, um, I guess, full. But there's still only one, two, three, four episodes total. Um, and, and actually, this one called Assimilation, it deals mostly with the Borg. I don't even know why it's under the Undine Advance, because to be honest with you, um, it could fit under the, uh, the Borg Collective <laughs> area, to be honest with you. But um, 
they added I, I'm not sure I'm trying to recall it's been so long I'm trying to recall if they added this one in later or not or if this came out when the game I don't think this mission was here when the game was released or it might have been but they didn't have the reward for it set up then because the reward is something special all right so first let's talk about the mission and what we have to do and then we'll talk about the reward at, uh, at the end of the end of the mission excuse me all right so assimilation the Undine are one of a few races powerful to stand up to the Borg, but, even, but when even they fall prey to the Collective, your crew must restore the balance. Admiral Battlegroup Omega has detected Borg, Borg ships near NGC-4447. There is of little interest out there, so I don't know why the Borg would be sending ships to that area. They may know something we don't. I need a ship to investigate and deal with the situation. Watch your six, Admiral. The Undine have been known to move through that area. Don't let them catch you unaware. Um, so investigate the Borg presence in NGC-4447, which is lo located in Gamma Orionis. And we will get, and we'll talk about this reward, the uh, Console Universal Assimilated Module. Um, so we'll talk about that at the end of the episode and how that ties into the Borg set. For now, let's get straight to the uh, mission. So we gotta head out of here, we gotta go back to Gamma Orionis. So yeah, I don't think they had that reward when the game first came out, but they added it later on uh, when they had the whole Borg set come out. Then they added that reward to the end of this mission. I'm just not sure if the mission itself was available at the time or not, because uh, some of them weren't. Some of the Undine, uh, Undine missions were not, and they actually ended up adding them after the game was released which uh, was nice. Have a few more episodes. Biggest problem of this game has always been in-game content. Once you get to the in-game, there's nothing else to do. It's always been a concern for players of this game. And uh, I guess it's going to continue to be a concern until they, you know, constantly, uh, on a continuous basis, give us content. But I understand that's hard to do. You have to write stories. You have to uh, do the episodes and all that, but um, they had a good thing going with the featured episodes. If they could just do that twice a year, I would be happy. You know, a, a series of five episodes based on some theme, like they've been, like they've been doing. You know, do that twice a year. I'd be totally happy with that. That's that's the amount we need. I think that would be awesome, and it gets so many players back in the game when they do that. So many old players come back to play those new featured episode series. Like when the Jim Hadar one was released, I mean, just a massive amount of people came back to play the game, you know, that had maybe been away for a while. Um, it really brings people into the game, and this game needs content like that. It needs constant content at least twice a year. Once a year is just it, it, honestly not enough. Now, Season 7, they're saying that that's supposed to be content-oriented. We're supposed to get a new sector block and some new ep episodes and stuff, which is nice and cool and new missions and all that good stuff. The problem is, if you only do it once a year or once... I mean, this is seven seasons in, and this is the first season they've ever done it. If it's just a one-off, it doesn't matter much, you know? It's like you got to keep it going. You have to keep it constant. So, okay, Season 7 is going to bring new content, but you need to prepare that Season um, 9 also brings more content. You know, you need to keep it going like every other season. We can't just do a one-off and then expect you to say, okay, we have new content now. Enjoy. <laughs> you know, that's what keeps these games going, MMOs especially, is new content. It's the only thing. Alright, so first we need to go to Gamma Orionis. So I'm getting off on a tangent there. I'm that's just, that's always been one of the complaints about this game. We need to go to NGC 4447. Which is right over here. Now a lot of people have uh, been waiting for this episode because they have done assimilation and have found out how difficult it is and uh, have possibly aggroed too much Borg, I'm going to say, and totally got themselves into some very, very bad situations. Believe me, I know how that can happen. Um, the very first part of the mission where you have to uh, find out where to go, which which one is the right transporter room or whatever, um, 
yeah, you can run into a lot of board. There is a way you can do it that's a little bit easier. And I'm going to show you that. <laughs> we are going to do this the, I guess, most efficient way possible. And I still may fail a little bit. There still may be some sticky situations, but because uh, I'm not totally equipped on, you know, I don't have, in fact, I need to put my remodulator back on. I don't have, you know, uh, okay, I guess we're getting some lag. There we go. I don't have, you know, Mark 11 gear. I don't have uh, a Mako or Omega set. I'm not really geared up to the max. But everyone's got a remodulator, so we're good there. Always make sure they have that. Oh, and my uh, Borg triple. Definitely need my Borg triple. Apparently, my inventory has filled up. I need to empty that. So I got my remodulator and got my Borg triple. I guess I'm as prepared as I can be for right now. Until I can get Mark 11 stuff. Or, actually, I can get Mark 11, but... Yeah, until I... Whatever. You know what I mean. Here we are. Alright, so the first part of this is space. Space-based, and it's not too hard. Okay, so... Captain, I have Borg shimps. Shimps. <laughs> I got Borg shrimps. Do, 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 do you like some... Do you like some Borg... Some assimilated Borg shrimps? Captain, I have Borg ships on sensors. They must be the Borg who were detected by Battle Group Omega. We need to deal with them immediately. Defeat the Borg. Alright, two groups of Borg. Not difficult at all. Let's take this uh, sphere out. Okay, that's one. When you're dealing with individual Borg like that sphere, um, it's, it's not too difficult. It's when you have a lot of Borg all at once on you that the Borg become really difficult. In the past, it used to be really bad um, because you would aggro the Borg and it uh, took a while to, uh, to fight the Borg. And you could aggro a lot of Borg at once. And uh, it was pretty painful. <laughs> it's, it's gotten easier. Even though they've added adaptation to it, it has actually gotten easier to fight the Borg. I'm talking about on ground. Okay. Oh, they got reinforcements. Now we have to deal with some reinforcements. Oh crap, it's cube. It's just a regular cube. Not attack failure. Check out that torpedo spread. That one failing. was awesome. See, now I'm having to use my heals a lot. Um, Captain, there are additional Borg ships. 
stop firing. Stop firing. At this point, stop firing, and the Borg are going to um, fly away. If you notice on the map, they're all going to different locations. Um, so stop firing, even though you can fire, don't let them go to where they need to go. And now we can read our ops. Captain, there are additional Borg ships entering the area, but they're not on an intercept course. They appear to be moving towards a repurposed Federation satellite. What could interest them over there? Um, follow the Borg ships. So basically, they're all moving in one direction, and that's down this way. So we need to follow them, and you can see they're all around me, and they're all moving. We need to go there and see what the heck is going on. So now I rebuilt all my shields because there will be more combat. So right now we're flying a full impulse to get there, which drains my power, but we'll just uh, drop out, you know, before we go into combat. And right now you can fire on them, but that's not gonna help you. It's not gonna do anything. So um, just fly down here to the big circle area. All right, Captain, those are rifts that open into fluidic space. The Borg have tangled with the Undine in fluidic space before, but they were defeated. They were unable to assimilate the Undine, and without that, the Undine were able to push them out. If they're willing to send a force into fluidic space again, the Borg must think that they have adapted in a way that will allow them to defeat the Undine. This region is ours to protect, and our orders are to eliminate Borg threat. I recommend that we engage the Borg and the Undine and secure the area. So now i got to take out Borg and Undine ships. So as you can see, I need to defeat three Borg and then three Undine groups. Um, but these ships that are flying in the same direction, you see them here, um, they don't count. So don't worry about them. It's these groups that are fighting each other that you have to worry about. Alright, I defeated the appropriate number of Borg. Now I need to defeat a couple more Undine. So we will find them near these fluidic space holes. In fact, that might be a group over there we can battle. Let's see. Yes, that is an Undine ship. ship is under attack. I really want one of those ships bad. I want to fly one of the unbeaten ships in this game. They're pretty cool. Alright, that's one down. There's a group over here we'll head toward. Yeah, I'd like to have an Undine ship. That would be pretty awesome. Trying to take out that plasma torpedo. Uh, Undine ships have always reminded me of the Vorlons. 
from Babylon 5. The uh, Vorlons, of course, use organic technology, organic ships, and that's just like the Undine ships. They are, they are um, organic. And the Undine ships have the capability to come together and take out whole planetoids. And just like the uh, Vorlons, they have a planet killer ship as well that can take out entire planets. So I've always connected the, uh, the Undine with the Vorlons. I like that connection. It fits. Um, Captain, there is a Borg ship reappearing through the rift. And it has an Undine vessel locked in a tractor beam. Sir, if the Borg brought an Undine vessel to our dimension, uh, they must have some purpose for it. They may have even adapted to the point that they can assimilate the, assimilate, assimilate the Undine's organic technology, or even the Undine themselves. If that's the case, we cannot allow them to succeed. If we can do enough damage to the Borg cube, the tractor beam should power down. Alternatively, we could try to destroy the Undine vessel and rob the Borg of their prize. Either way, way we need to work quickly. Uh, let's take this item. Now, let's see, there's the Borg ship. Borg cube. It has an Undine vessel. I'm going to uh, destroy the battleship. They cannot have this Undine battleship. There we go, I have thwarted their plans. Now I need to disable the board ship. Alright, now we have disabled it. We can stop firing on it, because that will not accomplish anything. It will not blow up. It is basically just disabled. Rear shields failing. We now need to beam over to the board cube and investigate. I'm picking up Undine life signs on the Borg cube. If the Borg transported Undine onto the cube, they are either testing a new assimilation process or they've already learned how to assimilate Undine. That could be real trouble for us. Imagine defending the Federation against Undine drones. That would be extremely, extremely, extremely bad. Very bad. Captain, the Borg cube is damaged and it will take some time for it to be fully operational again. We can take advantage of that and reconfigure our emitter arrays to temporarily block the cube's link to the collective. That will give us an opportunity to beam on board and stop the Borg. Alright, let's do this thing. And here is where it gets dicey. And I'm sure you all who have played this episode uh, have realized how you can really get yourself into trouble <laughs> on this mission. There are dozens of passageways here, sir. It's like a maze. Without their collective, I don't think the Borg would be able to operate this vessel. There is low frequency interference blocking the range of our scanners, but I am tacting a device ahead that appears to be an internal transporter. If we can get some more information about it, I might be able to determine how to operate it. All right, here's the very first thing you should do. Your bridge officers, they're very trigger happy, okay? They like to shoot Borg when they see them. And there are, as you can see, this whole map is filled with Borg. I mean, they are all over this Borg cube that we are in. So, first thing to do is to make it so your bridge officers do not attack. All you have to do is find the button for it. And I believe it's this one right here. Switches all crew to a passive mode. They will not attack, but they will continue to heal and buff. So if I click this, you can see that icon change for all of them. They are now on passive mode, which means they will not fire their weapons. But what they will do is they will heal and buff me, but they won't uh, fire their weapons. So that's the first thing you want to do. That way you will not aggro all the Borg on this ship. Otherwise, uh, you will get yourself into big trouble. Now I need to find my... Alright, that's my remodulator up there. Okay. I actually don't want it there. I want it there. Okay. Alright, so the first thing to do, and you can see these Borg in their alcove, 
you can fire on them. And if you're, if you're, okay, now here's the problem, though. See what happened? <laughs> Darn it. Alright, that sucked. I'll explain here in just a second. Hold on. That is not the easy way to do it. That is the hard way. <laughs> Oh, stop attacking me. Alright, here's what happened, okay? Obviously, they're not attacking, but what happened is... My Anar... She spawned her... Clone of herself. That power that she has. And because she spawned her clone... That caused my other bridge officers... To spawn their powers. And uh, they spawned uh, their support, one spawned a support drone, and uh, other stuff. And then of course the support drones, they're not on passive mode, they fire. So, and my, and my the clone of my Anar, she is also not on passive, she can fire. So what happened is, when she made a clone of herself, her uh, power that she has, and then my support drone, they both started firing on the board. And that got me into trouble, and even though I have my bridge officers on passive. So, that sucks. Okay, you need to die now, please. Alright, so, I'm gonna do this the fast way. I've, I've taken a lot of time and I've wasted a lot of time talking here. But here's how you do it the fast way, okay? Um, you have to find out where the transporter is, and you don't know where it is. Is it down this hall? Is it down this hall? Is it down this hall? Is it this hall? Is it this hall? Who knows? But you have to find it, and you have to go through this whole board cube, okay? Well, the problem is, each time you play this mission, the location of the transporter changes. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit random, but it's usually in two locations. And that usually ends up being somewhere... It's either over here or over here. So, here's the way to do this, okay? Don't worry about your bridge officers. Because when you get to the transporter, it will beam them down anyway, even if they're all dead. So leave them behind, because they're going to aggro Borg. So what you do is you just run through the cube as fast as you can and find the transporter room and don't worry about your bridge officers okay all right watch this we're going to just pretend i do not have bridge officers with me and first we scan this device because you have to start here you have no choice it says this is definitely a transporter device but it is set to a specific location we need to find the right one blah 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 all right now they're going to go attack the borg let them just leave them alone and start Searching for the correct transporter. Okay, that is not the correct one, and that's never really the correct one. Um, generally, it's either, now remember, it's either the one at the very end of this hall, or it's the one past this hall. So basically, um, I'm just going to pass that door, I'm going to run down to this one. This one could be it. It's either this one, or it's another one that goes on somewhere. No, this is not the correct one, so... Keep moving, we'll try this one. This is the correct one. Now, if this wasn't the correct one, what you want to do is keep going this way. And it's usually either that one, or if you go through this door, there is another one at the end of this hall. And it's sometimes that one also. So that basically shows you where to go. And if neither of those are it, which is very rare, 
Um, you can just keep working your way around and going in these passageways and seeing if it's in. Again, don't worry about your bridge officers. Um, they're going to fight the Borg or do whatever. Just don't worry about them. There's probably another one at the end of this hall. Um, as long as you don't mess with the Borg, they pretty much don't mess with you too much. You can just run past them like that. Just be really fast. So this first part, you can get by pretty easy just by running past the Borg. Because they're slow. And leave your bridge officers as fodder. Let them fight the Borg. But now the second part, you will want their help. So once you find the right device, um, use it and transport to the other section. And when you do that, all your bridge officers will come with you. Whether they're dead or alive, they'll all beam down with you. As you can see. Now you want to put them back on um, regular normal action. Because you will need their help for this next section. This is the last part of this mission, and basically it says, Captain, the Borg have already begun the process of assimilating the Undine. We need to destroy their research stations and put a stop to this immediately. And the way this map is arranged is that there are groups of Borg, um, as you can see, laid out like this, and you need to scan each station all around this map. Um, the goal here is you don't want to aggro all these groups at once. If you aggro this group and this group and then that group gets involved, you're just dead in the water, okay? <laughs> so try to focus on one group at a time. Now there is a an accolade here, and the accolade for this map is to scan everything that you can in this room, and we'll go around and do it. And um, you have the option, you don't have to. You can destroy all the Borg in this room or not. That's up to you. But if you scan everything that you can scan, all the devices that you can scan, you get a special accolade. So I'm going to do that to show you guys what that is. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to focus on this first group right here. Now, this is a problem where your bridge officers may run out and get other Borg involved. And that does happen, and that's where people get into a lot of trouble. Because once you get too many Borg, it's, it's a lot of trouble. Try to keep... Try to keep, uh, keep away from the other Borg. So, I've got that group. See, I've already aggroed Borg over here, so let me take care of them first. I'll see that my bridge officers have also aggroed Borg over here. Lovely. I'm trying not to use the mortar because the mortar will aggro other Borg. The mortar, if you set it up, can fire anywhere um, in this room. And um, what'll happen is it'll like start attacking other Borg in other groups. And uh, that's going to get into a lot of trouble. So I'm not going to use the mortar. It's not a good weapon if you uh, are in a lot of, uh, if you have a lot of different groups of war. So there's that CRM 200 we were talking about, but I don't know why he's firing it on me. <laughs> okay. Now this right here where you have undine, partially assimilated undines, this is the research station that you can scan. And if you scan all of these, you get an accolade. Actually, actually, that's part of the mission. It's actually you have to go up to each one and scan them. Let's see. Captain, these stations are feeding data into the ship's vinculum. 
about the Undine. The Borg will use this data to develop foolproof assimilation protocols that will be able to adapt effort effortlessly to Undine physiology. We have to destroy the research stations, blah, blah, blah. All right, so... All right, that's what you have to do. See, look, they've started attacking other Borg. Thank you very much. All right, so after you scan these, these uh, devices here, which is required for the mission, um, oops, I, I wanted to start doing this. Now you can go up to each Undine and examine partially assimilated Undine. If you go up to each one, you'll see you have an option to, um, to uh, scan both of them. That is how you get the accolade in this. My bridge officers are aggroing every Borg in here. Alright. So, to make this easy, <laughs> so I can show you how to do the darn thing, I'm going to just destroy every Borg first. I'm going to clear this room out. That's probably the smart choice. Just clear this room. Oh, I'm not used to, it's been a while since I've had to remodulate um, without the um, internal frequency modulator that you get on Mako and Omega. Alright, so basically, oh, we've cleared out several groups already. I'm just going to keep going through, and I'm going to go ahead and just clear this room out. Oh, now we got big old daddy Undine. Big boss is after us. See the big boss? He wants to fight. It's time for him. So let's take him out. He is a fully assimilated undie. Save me, somebody, save me. Ah, you can just respawn. When you respawn, it respawns all your bridge officers. It respawns you all to full health, actually. Which is quite nice. At this point, we can continue the mission and actually finish it. We don't actually have to do that scanning thing I was talking about. You don't have to do that. That's optional. So basically, you just come in, you kill a few groups, you kill the big boss, and then you can finish the mission. But um, I don't want to do that. The way I do this mission is I first clear out the entire room, and then I scan all these uh, Undine to get that accolade, and that's what I want to show you here today is uh, how you can do that. So basically, um, we're just going to clear out the rest of this place because we can. And now I am using the mortar because I decided to just decimate the entire place. <laughs> And you may die a lot in this mission, and that's okay, just keep responding. Now see, there is the benefit of that secondary fire on the CRM. It really slows down the board. 
Does a lot of damage to them. I love that. Save me. modulation on this thing takes so long on the regular modulator on the, uh, on the one you get with the Mako and Omega set um, it's real fast I'm used to the fast one I love giving my brain that um, cryo gun. That's just so useful. So I kind of did this mission a little slow. Not exactly the way I usually do it. I was probably trying to explain it too much. But basically that first part, I just run again as fast as I can to find the right transporter. Then when I find it, I come to this room and I just kill every boar. Just decimate the entire place. And I try to do it as fast as I can. That's really my strategy, that's it. <laughs> run through and kill everything. This is why I lo love the engineering kit um, because I have the uh, I have that phaser turret, two drones, a mortar. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Okay. We have now cleared this entire room of war. Isn't that neat? Now let's go get that accolade, shall we? And just remember, the accolade is here if you want it. Um, clear out the room and it's easier to get. We will scan this Undine. We will scan this one. and it doesn't tell you that you're getting it. It's kind of like one of those hidden accolades. You know, you have no idea that it's doing it, but it is. It's counting upwards until you hit the number you need. And we just come around and scan these other, this, these other two.
and then these two over here, and that should give us that uh, accolade. Nice little hidden accolade there for you. Now you know. And there it is. Accolade complete. The impossible. So basically, um... That's what you get for scanning all the Undine in here, is uh, that accolade, the impossible. So, there you go. Nice little hidden accolade. Okay, now we can complete the mission. And all you have to do is activate the vinculum. It's going to blow the place up and then you leave. <laughs> That's it. So, it's going to do that. That's it. Uh, this mission is complete. We're back in a sector space right where we started. Now, uh, that was a really rough run through. Typically, my run throughs are a lot smoother than that for this episode, for that mission. Uh, again, I, the first part of it, I just, you know, run as quickly as I can to, to find the right transporter, and I usually just don't worry about my bridge officers. They can go fight Borg, they can die, they can do whatever. I, it doesn't concern me. I just run really fast past the Borg and uh, find the right transporter room. And then as soon as you use that transporter, you beam down and all your bridge crew are with you at full health. So it doesn't really matter if they all, if they all die or whatever. Then on that last part, I, I run through, I first scan the um, thing like I did. Uh, and then I just clear out the room, kill all the Borg. And then I go back, get the accolade if I don't have it, and uh, finish the mission. Overload the vinculum and leave. And mission is complete. And it's not that hard, but it's a good test of your ability to fight Borg and lots of them at once. So if you want to test your gear out, your ground gear, for fighting Borg, that's a good mission to do it at. Because you can get a lot of Borg on you at once and test out your gear and test out how strong you are and uh, how good your stuff is. And if you just want to practice killing Borg, like for the STFs and stuff, that's a good mission to do it too, because again, you aggro a lot of Borg at once, and um, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble really fast. <laughs> Alright, so that's Assimilation, and it's pretty awesome, um, pretty awesome uh, mission in my opinion. That was a close one. If the Borg had succeeded, I don't even want to think about fighting Undine drones. Good work. So we stopped the Borg from assimilating the Undine for now. That's a good thing. All right, for our rewards, we get a Positron Deflector, or a Tachyon Deflector, or a Graviton Deflector. Well, all of these three deflectors are useless um, because we're using the Aegis set, and we're going to be using um, other sets beyond that, so none of these normal deflectors are worth it for us. The one that we want is this one right here, Console Universal Assimilated Module. It's a very rare universal console, so it fits in your console slot. Um, it is bind on pickup, so you can only have, um, you know, one uh, on your uh, on on each ship. You can only have one per ship. Um, but here's what it gives you. Here's what it does for you when you put it in a console slot. Okay, po uh, plus 0.9 percent critical chance improvement, plus 9 percent critical severity. So it increases your crit chance and crit severity. So if you're using weapons like anti-proton weapons, which have an innate uh, crit severity and crit uh, chance um, this console really benefits that um, any any weapons where you have uh, crit chance and severity or modifiers on that you've added on your ship um, this console um, helps boost that so if you're going for that crit if you want to increase your crit chance and you're going for that crit severity hit uh, this console is huge on that. that. That's why this console fits in perfectly with anti-proton weapons. Because anti-proton weapons have an innate, an inherent crit severity and chance. That is their innate ability. Like tachyon weapons have the innate ability to um, reduce or drain shields. Um, the uh, the, the anti-protons, theirs is the crit severity and chance. Plus, on top of that, you can get modifiers. You can get... Um, you know, a very rare anti-proton beam or cannon 
that has also crit chance and severity on it, improving it even more so you're like really tripling up on that stuff. So if you're all about wanting crit chance and severity and all that good stuff, um, you know, to hit the, to get those critical hits and all, anti-proton weapons is what you want, and you want this console universal assimilated module. But it does more than that. That's not where it stops. This module also gives you plus five weapon power settings, so it increases your weapon power flat out. It also gives you a plus five starship hull repair to help you, uh, your hull repair. It also gives you plus uh, 22.5 starship graviton generators. Let's take it and let's read up. Also, it is part of the Borg set. The Borg is a four-piece set instead of a three-piece set. We'll talk about that here in a second. All right, so let's look at this console. And oh, my inventory is full. Um, I can't even turn it in because my inventory is full. So let's, let's take that out. Now we can turn it in. And now I'm level 50. Congratulations, Admiral. Accolade complete, Vice Admiral. Promotion, Vice Admiral. We need to do the promotion, of course. So we'll do that in a second. But there we are. Um, here's the console. And it goes on your ship, of course. Not yet. I'm ready for that. Alright, now let's read about it. Info. This console uses salv salvaged Borg technology coupled with modifications originally designed aboard the USS Voyager that use Borg alg algorithms adapted by Seven of Nine for greater efficiency. It can be installed in any type of console slot. In addition to an overall weapon power increase, it also adds bonus critical stats. Equipping multiple Borg modifications apply extra improvements as the systems work in tandem. So we talked about the critical chance, the severity of the weapon power, and the hull repair. Um, the Graviton Generators improves your Starship Knock, Repel, and Slow abilities. Um, and then you get, you get, you can get the rest of the Borg pieces. There are four Borg pieces in total. First one is this console. The second one is the, um, well, it's, uh, the, not sure what order they go in, but I guess it goes in, it, See, so it's telling you shield array, but that's really not the order you get them in, or the order you would want to get them in. You, the next one you would probably want to start with is the engines, the sub-transwarp engines. And that would be two pieces of the set. And then after that, you would want to get the deflector array. And that would be three pieces of the set. And then if you got the shield, that would be all four pieces. Alright, if you have two pieces of the set, um, you get this passive... Um, health regeneration and starship hull repair on your ship. When receiving all damage, 2% chance of applying autonomous regeneration sequencer. So that's like a whole heal. Um, if you have three pieces of the set, you get uh, this shield heal. When receiving all damage, 10% chance of applying multi-regenerative shield array when any shield facing falls below 20%. So with two pieces you get the hull heal and with three pieces you get the hull and shield heal and then if you have all four pieces you get an assimilated tractor beam which is basically like a Borg tractor beam that can draw in targets and uh, hold them and uh, while it's holding them it gives kinetic damage uh, reduces their turn rate, it uh, reduces power settings um, it really um, it hurts them basically, kind of like drains their power as you're holding them but the only way to get all four pieces is to use the Borg shield, and the Borg shield is not really the best shield uh, for a cruiser. Okay, so to the two-piece bonus to get the hull repair can simply be the console and the deflector, or the console and the engine. And then if you want the hull repair and the shield repair, then just have the console, the engine, and the deflector. Those three pieces are all you need, and you really don't need the fourth piece, the shield, for the tractor beam. These, in my opinion, are the two most important um, set bonuses for the Borg set, and that is that hole regeneration and shield regeneration. And these things get, you will notice they get used a lot. Um, even though it says a 2% chance of applying, blah blah, 10% chance, it, you, it, it applies a lot. When you're in uh, battle with um, in the STS, 
uh, and, and your ship, you know, you're doing battle, you will notice that the shield array uh, regen kicks in a lot. You'll notice that the whole one does too, uh, more often than you would think. And these are important because basically you get a whole regeneration and you get a shield regeneration for free. Just by having those three set bonus, those three set morg sets on there. And then you just equip your ship with the best shield you can. And that's either the Mako or the Omega shield right now. Um, and, and bada boom, you've got a really nice setup. So as you can see, the Borg stuff is, it, it looks complicated, but boy, do you get a lot of stuff with it. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and put the Borg console on my ship. And it's really best to show you this in space. I'm going to I'm gonna go to um, Soul System real quick so you can see the stats change when I put it on there. You don't see those stats in sector space. You have to go to, like, Soul or something like that in uh, space around a planet to uh, see the stats change. But I'm going to show you what, what that console does. Um, let's delete something else real quick. All right. Now I got to figure out. Okay, accolade complete, assimilated because I defeated the Borg cube in fluidic space. So you get an accolade for that mission as well. Boy, that was a delay. Um, okay, so now I have to decide what console I'm willing to sacrifice um, because it, you can put this console in any of these console slots, but I'm gonna have to sacrifice something. Um, now I like my two EPS things because I've got total beams on this thing. I like that and I like that. I'm going to take off one of these uh, biofunction units. Okay. Now notice that my power right now for my weapons is 120. Okay. Um, and then also notice that my crit chance is 2.5, my crit severity is 50. Now watch what happens when I put this console on. Crit chance went up to 3.4, crit severity went up to 59.1, and my power went up to 125, a whole 5 plus 5. And 125 is the max weapon power that you can have. So, just by putting on that console, I have now got the max weapon power I can have, which is good for my beams, because beams need all the help they can get. I've increased my critical chance by a little bit, and I've increased my crit severity almost by 10%. So that is awesome. I've increased all those stats just by putting on that console. It also adds onto your ship a visual thing. It adds these Borg um, looking uh, nodules on your ship. See if I, if I take it off or if I disable the visuals on it, the uh, nodules go away. And there's uh, not on, they're not on there. Turn it back on. And uh, now they're showing. So you can see it adds uh, it adds a couple there. It adds two there on this ship. It adds two under there. You can see uh, it adds two under there. So that starts borging out your ship. That's like the very first thing you want to get. If you want to borg out your ship or get any of the borg stuff, the console is a given. You have to have the console. You need the console. You want the console. Even if you do not plan to Borg out your ship, and you instead plan to go all Omega, or all Mako, or all something else, you still want the Borg console, because it will not interfere with any other sets. See, I still have my full Aegis set on, and I'm still getting all the benefits of my Aegis set. But all I've done is add on some Borg enhancements now that have really helped, just by putting this one console in. And you just have to decide which console you want to sacrifice to use it. But it's worth it. And uh, now we're going to get those benefits. And um, and that, that was easy. That's like... That's just easy. So now I'm instantly better just by putting that console on. And we're on our way to Borgifying our ship. Which we will do. Um... So now, because I became level 50, let's just go ahead and turn in this promotion. And uh, now we can say we're at the top of the game. So there we go. Congratulations. I am now an admiral. Accolade complete. Veteran vessel. That's because I had 600. I have this 600-day veteran thing. Um, so I get a you know free vessel and all that. 
but um, basically there we go I'm now level 50 I'm vice admiral this bar will no longer increase in rank or grade it will no longer go white I'm at the top I'm at level 50 I can't get anything else uh, I, I can do vice admiral daily missions uh, I've got that quantum slipstream drive we've been talking about I can use that now um, that's it I mean I'm at the top of the game I've got the max health that I can get and everything I mean that's it and and now we can start doing mark 11 stuff if we go back to the uh, Cardassian stuff now when I go to uh, the that FE when I click on um, second wave it should give me Mark 11. By now, you've faced the Borg. Yeah. See, Mark the 11. The collective is appearing with Jim more Hadar, frequency in the Alpha Quadrant now. Rifle. And defend. So now it's giving me the uh, Mark 11 stuff. Go to this. We've evacuated everyone we could. Mark to 11. We're setting Jim up a Hadar base there armor. to coordinate our counter. So all that is now Mark 11. So anything I replay now will give me Mark 11 gear. Even if I just replayed assimilation again, I would now get Mark 11. Uh, deflectors you can see they were mark 10 just a second ago now that we're level 50 though now they're mark 11 so now I can replay anything and get mark 11 gear and one thing I do want to replay uh, since we're not worrying about skill points anymore one thing I do want to replay is the uh, uh, that mission uh, last mission of this one night of the comet so that I can get the mark 11 Federation type 3 phaser rifle that way I'll have the top top end one. Right now I have the Mark 10, but now I can get the Mark 11. So I do, I will want to replay that. I'll probably do that off screen. And then as far as, you know, gearing out myself, um, I can stick with the Jim Hadar set. I could go Mark 11 Jim Hadar set, or I could start working towards, you know, a better set uh, eventually, which eventually I will be using Mako or Omega or something like that. Um, but uh, probably on this character, I'll be using Mako, Mako gear. But, um, you know, the Jim Hadar Mark 10 still isn't bad. I could go up to Mark 11, be even just a little bit better. You can, unfortunately, with the Jim Hadar set, you can only have one set at a time, which sucks. Uh, so eventually, I'll want my Jim Hadar to have it. And if I give my Jim Hadar that set, that means I cannot have it. So while I'm using it, he cannot use it. So that kind of sucks. But once I get my Mako set, then my Jim Hadar will get this set. Until then, I'll just keep using the Jim Hadar set because it's still the best thing until I get Mako. Um, and I need to go clean out my inventory. I got another row here. And now that we're level 50 and we're at the top, we can get a ship, of course. It is time now for a brand new ship. Um, and we've been flying the Enterprise E all this time, and it has been an awesome ship for us. And I told you guys we would go ahead and progress to the next level, which would be the new Enterprise F. And I gotta say, I have been playing with the science version of it on my main character, and it is a dog. It turns so slow. I just don't like it. <laughs> it's just not a good ship. Uh, even the sea store version is just not a good ship. I don't like it. I don't know why. But, yeah, it's just, I don't know. So if we go to the sea store under ships, um, find the Odyssey. You can see the Odyssey science cruiser, um, the science version one is available. So I could, per I could get that one now. I already had bought it but I have it on my main character. Um, again, that's just the science one. But because we're an engineer, the one I would want to be playing with is the Odyssey uh, engineer version, which is, here it is. I guess it would be the operations cruiser. And the tactical, if you want to do tactical, this costs 2,500 uh, Zen and I have 652, so I would have to purchase some in order to get this but this is the one that I would want to fly as an engineer and I don't have it yet but I do want to try it um, you get uh, it's got a large crew you got four uh, f weapon slots four and aft four device slots a lot of bridge officer stations um, okay hull strength 
it's really not even the best hole strength to be honest with you um, six degrees per second turn rate is horrible um, you get plus five power to all subsystems you get an advanced quantum slipstream drive um, and you got the chevron separation where you can separate the ship into two parts right just like the galaxy at galaxy class can do um, that's what's unique about the operations one and you get the uh, you get an instant universal and a lieutenant commander universal and you only get one commander engineering that sucks I would like to have like two but you know hey <laughs> but the ship itself is just so slow but because I told you guys we would do it um, I guess I'm going to go that route and uh, fly it anyway at least for the next few missions probably is not going to be the one I stick with forever but I will fly it just so you guys can see it but I'm going to have to purchase Zen to do it um, and then after that I've already told you which got which is my favorite one at um, at uh, this rank and that's the advanced heavy cruiser refit I find it No, 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 I passed it. Uh, advanced, I'm looking for advanced heavy cruiser refits. That's the advanced heavy cruiser, but that's, I don't know, is that the refit? I don't think so. Maybe it is? No, that's not it. It should say advanced heavy cruiser refit. I swear I'm losing my mind. And I know I have it. That's it. Excelsior cruiser refit. Not advanced. I guess they just go ahead and call it the Excelsior cruiser. Okay, so this is the one that I think is the best uh, ship in the game. For, for even for end user um, honestly it, uh, it turns really fast and it can take a beating I can show you it I have it on another character of mine and uh, it's my primary ship for that character but it in my opinion is the best in-game cruiser because it you can tank it you can turn it into a beam boat and it turns on a dime it is probably the fastest turning cruiser in this game. <laughs> it turns really nicely so you can uh, get away from things. Uh, so I like it a lot. And that's what I went with on one of my main characters was this ship as the in-game ship. So uh, what I'll do is I'll probably show you the Odyssey and then I'll show you this ship too, I guess. Because as far as cruisers go, this one is my favorite. But I, I am curious what we can do with the Odyssey. Don't know. May take a whole episode and just record myself upgrading, getting the Odyssey. Probably will, actually. Might be boring for you all, but hey, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, so anyway, oh, we're just wasting a lot of time now. Um, that was a simulation. That was a great episode. That was fun. We got the Borg uh, Universal console slot thing, and that's awesome. Now we have three episodes left to do. We have the return, fluid dynamics, and a light in the dark. So we will do the return and probably not the next episode because I think I will record an episode upgrading to the Odyssey and then we'll do the uh, return with the Odyssey and we'll have the Odyssey on the return fluid dynamics and a light in the dark okay so I will see you all for that and again thank you so much for watching and woohoo level 50 yay